been so good to you? He has been so good. And I will want us to acknowledge that by standing on our feet and lift our hands unto heaven and praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. His mercies endures forever. We take this song three times. Let us lift our hands to heaven and praise the Lord. Back. Greet them with a smile. 
This is the sixth month. The Lord has been so good. Despite the challenges, the Lord has remained good. So greet them with a smile. Hallelujah. Okay. We give thanks to God. He is so good to us. Before we take the... Okay. Before we take the dedications, we want to pray. First of all, we want to uh, thank God for our nation, Nigeria, for what is happening and how God is intervening. Some may want to ask, but things are getting almost out of control. But God is still in, working in the affairs of men. No matter what you may be seeing, everything is still within the control of the Spirit of God. As long as we remain faithful to God in praying, He said, If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, and pray, turn from their evil ways. Then I will hear from heaven and we heal their land. Nigeria shall be healed in the name of Jesus. Don't ask me how. I don't know. But God, the sovereign Lord, who has set the boundaries of Nigeria, will heal this land in the name of Jesus. So if you believe that, can you be on your feet and just lift up this nation? First of all, thank God for keeping us by His mercy and grace, His goodness and His compassion that do not fail has kept us. Today is 3rd of June. Give thanks to God for this nation, Nigeria, and for the people, the land, the wealth of the nation, the government. People in position of authority. Thank God for them. Yes, many of them may not be doing what is right. But God is permitting them to be there for now. Thank God for them. And pray. Committing them into the hands of the living God. The politicians. The leaders. The opinion leaders. In various states of the federation. And at federal level. At various strata of the society. Let the hand of the law be upon them, moderating their activities. Oh, Father. Oh, Jesus. Let us declare that Nigeria is the lost property. The devil is not the owner of Nigeria. Nigeria is the Lord's. Lord, rule and reign in the appears of Nigeria. We, your de children, dedicate this nation into your hands again this morning. You are our God. You are our Lord. Over our leaders, we declare your Lordship. Over the citizens, we declare your Lordship. Over the affairs of this nation, we declare your Lordship. You are worthy. Father, thank you. To you be all the glory, Lord. We exalt you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, it has been announced to us earlier on that this time last Sunday, uh, the brother of Amomichi passed on. And it is needful for us to pray for the families, the Oberts and the Ijeomas, that the mighty hand of the Lord will uphold them. We encourage them. You know, no matter how old as it were, a dear one is, when they pass on, or how young they are, we don't want our loved ones to go, even though we realize that all of us will still go if Jesus tarries. So it's a, it's a moment of emotional trial. Let me put it that way. And let us therefore pray for Mommy Chi, especially pray for the wife of the departed, pray for the children, pray for the extended family, the siblings, that the hand of the Lord will, 
uphold them we encourage them we strengthen them they will not sorrow like the unbelievers but they will look up unto jesus the author and the finisher of their faith please pray i'm sure you love our momichi you love the family of the departed let's pray that the hand of the lord we keep them we preserve them and as plans are being put in place for the burial program let the spirit of the lord guide them let there be oneness in the family let the lord be glorified even during the burial program oh my shake pray for johnny messes for everyone that we have to travel because of this on wednesday some of our brethren will be traveling with the immediate family to the east to take the body to the east let us pray that the hand of the lord will grant unto them journey mercies to and fro oh father you are the faithful god that which is committed into your hands you are able to keep unto the uttermost keep and preserve them all oh gracious lord thank you father we bless you king of glory receive all the praise lord in the name of jesus christ father thank you for you have heard us and beyond our asking you will do for the obeds for the idiomas let your name be glorified thank you father as you comfort them and encourage them in you in jesus name we have prayed amen praise the lord uh, please listen to this very important announcement we have exactly one month to the clts international version and a lot are still yet to be done and this year's clts is very unique because it's the 28th version so put your hands together because the lord has been so faithful in his gracious dealings with us over these 20 years we will still be seeing more on, along that line as the time goes on so we should all hands should be on deck so there will be a general manual labor towards the clts on this coming saturday 9th of june you know we need to clear so many places set up so many things both on better land at rehobot land so please all men and others every one of us should please bring along our uh, working implements especially wheelbarrow shovels and other cleaning instruments we will be starting the the manual labor as early as 6 a.m so that we can finish on time for that day so please be punctual the lord will strengthen us all as we labor for his kingdom in jesus name remember these are servants of god we are expecting from nigeria and many other african nations from south africa from malawi from burkina faso and so on so we want to make sure that the environment is tidy and the place is well set in place so that when they come they will enjoy their stay and please uh, the list of the expected participants have been distributed to the zones the discipleship center leader should take note of this to take the list also to their discipleship center on tuesday so that prayers can go on on behalf of these servants of god these are church leaders from various parts of this nation and africa the lord will bless us and strengthen us as we do this in jesus name praise the lord so at this point we want to have the babies to be dedicated the omaruis the azumaras and oshomogo glory voices please come Let's and go. see what the lord has done for me come and see what the lord has done for me
are miracle children they are the heritage of the lord the fruit of the womb is a great reward from the lord thank god for these our mothers whom the lord has taken through the valley of the shadow of death and he has brought them forth alive and today we see the smile on the faces of the mothers yes and the babies are just sleeping peacefully they are proper children to god be the glory put your hands together for our god the lord has been so good to us he's been so good he's been so good amen so right to my left since my names are marvelous Emmanuel Tochuku, which means praise the Lord. Chidiose, God has done it well. The son of Azumaras, son of Jesus. And in the middle, she's saying, My names are Beulah, Favor, Deborah, Victoria, Dominion, Gold, Iwenosa, Miracle, Ifemosi, Oluashe Ifumi. The Mitokwe, Oluwa, Jomi Loju, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Oshomoko, Friday, daughter of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. To my right, there are 20 names. And it's understandable. Yes. Okay, let me read out the names. So at least you should pick out one or two so that you will not forget. Says. My names are Princess Faithful Osareme Chidebube. That is God is awesome. Miracle, favor, blessing, Emanuela, Deborah, comfort, honor, beloved. Ogechuku Kama. Ogechuku Kama. Good. And that means, okay, the meaning is not put there. What? God's time is the best. Yes, I agree with that. Oluomach. Olu. Oluomach. Good. Beautiful work of God. Onyena Turuchi. Pardon me, please. Onyena Maturuchi. Who can dictate for God? Then Amarachi. The grace of God. Chiamaka, God is good. Glory, burial. Adauma. 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 Uh -huh. Good daughter. Hallelujah. Daughter of Omaroyi. Daughter of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. We have every reason to rejoice. When we see children like this, we, our hope is kindled in the Lord that we have a great future. Yes, the church of Christ has a great future. If Jesus tarries, these are the ones who will take up the mantle and the staff of Jesus, projecting the kingdom of our God in their own generation. Shall we begin to pray? First of all, thank God for their parents whom the Lord used to bring them forth into the world for the grace the Lord bestowed upon them, the strength for the mothers, for the support of the fathers. Oh, we are grateful, Lord. These children are proper children. Oh, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Our hearts rejoice in you. You have been so good to us. Thank him for these children. Oh, Father, thank you. Man, gradually wash the most soon to go by them. Lay great day by Santa Kitty. Ready, the most. Man, Father, we are grateful. So commit them into your, the hands of the Lord for safekeeping. Commit the appearance too into the hands of the Lord for sake keeping. The Lord that has brought them into the hands of into the world at a time like this knows what to do to preserve.
preserve them spirit soul and body this one shall be kept by the power of god they will fulfill destiny father we are grateful eternal rock of ages we are grateful thank you for bringing princess faithful Emanuela into the world at a time like this we receive her into the body of Christ with gratitude O oh God because she is a child of destiny born in due time father that which is committed into your hands you are able to keep keep and preserve her for your purpose in the name of Jesus that she will live to fulfill destiny therefore we lift her up into your able hands O God that she will be dedicated we dedicate her in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit we bless your name, eternal rock of ages. For Beulah, thank you for her name is favor. Lord, let these names characterize her life. Let your glory be revealed over her life. May she live to bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, as she's growing, may she grow steadily, spiritually, and physically in the name of Jesus. Therefore, dedicate her in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Eternal Rock of Ages, we give thanks to you for marvelous Emmanuel to Chuku. We ask, O oh God, that your eyes will perpetually be upon him. Amen. Gracious Lord, we pray that it will be well with him, Amen. that he will grow as a tender plant before your face Amen. to fulfill all that are in your heart concerning his life in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are dedicated in the name of the Father, Amen. of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful Father, we thank you for the parents whom you have helped tremendously to bring forth these children. We pray that you will fill them with wisdom from on high, with strength with vigor, with vitality, with understanding of what they should do for each of these children at the right time in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that financially and materially they will be blessed so that they will have all sufficiency to take good care of these children in the name of Jesus, that they will teach these children the way of the Lord. Father, we pray for the parents and these children that no disease, no satanic opposition, no satanic imagination we walk concerning them. We seal them all with the blood of Jesus. And by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that is above every other name, they be preserved in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we use these children as a point of contact for all our brethren that are looking unto you for such blessings. For your word has assured us that children are your heritage. And so you give children to whosoever you will. And you have promised that we will not be barren, that we will be fruitful. You gave the command that we should be fruitful. We should multiply. We should replenish. You should have dominion. Let this be the portion of everyone who trusts in you for the gift of children. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. Let their expectations come true very fast. Let there be no more delay. In the name of Jesus. We bless your holy name. Receive all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. Congratulations. To you, Lord, be all the glory. To you, Lord, be all the honor. To you, Lord, be all the glory and adoration
today's miracle and communion service we have an anchor to which we can hold onto the lord he is our anchor so we take that song with great expectation and expression of our hope in him he will answer to our heart cries today in the name of jesus shall we be on our feet as we take this song
Aleluia. 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 The Bible says, once as the Lord spoken, twice have I heard that power belongs to God. Like an introduction to our song this morning. And funny enough, the person who picked him did not consult with the choir. Our song says, at the center of it all, it's you that I see. I remember that many years ago in our bulletin, we used to have what we call Word of Wisdom every Sunday. And sometime in 1998, one of the Sundays, the Word of Wisdom was, with Jesus in my boat, I can smile at the storm. I, I kept that bulletin for many years. And this morning, we are encouraging you to look unto Jesus. Because at the center of all the troubles, all the turbulence, all the challenges we might be facing, there might be questions in our heart this morning, five months gone, what is God doing? At the center of it all, Jesus is there. Because when the disciples went to him, in that turbulence, they were like, Jesus, don't you care if we perish? Yeah, Jesus knew that as long as he's there, there can be no ill. And we said to somebody this morning, as long as Jesus is at the center of the trouble, he cannot consume you. It doesn't matter for how long it has lasted this morning. The challenge is look up to Jesus. The challenge is look up because in his name there is power. In his name miracles happen. And today is miracle service day. If you won't get help today, in church, I don't know where you will get help. Let your heart be open. This is your day. This is the day of visitation. The Lord will give you that miracle that will take away this storm in the name of Jesus. At the center of it all is you that I see. Be blessed.
stronger than the strongest, higher than the highest, mightier than the mightiest. No. service this morning. We are not unfamiliar with the fact that it's a day of covenant between us and God. But our God is the one who is the miracle worker, not any man. And we are so glad that we are in his presence. In his presence there is fullness of joy at his right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. It's amazing uh, the type of... I'll just share two experiences I had in the last two weeks. One was two weeks ago. One was yesterday. Two weeks ago I had to travel to the northern part of this country and had to visit a remote part of a state with vast agricultural land. When I say vast agricultural land, I mean plenty of land. And not ordinary land, plenty of fertile land. 
and as I was going to the place where I was supposed to uh, visit on official trip, it's a rice farm. How many of us like to eat rice? Just be honest with us. Even if you don't like it, it has become our staple food. Those days, we ate rice only on ceremonial occasions. And sometimes when you finish eating, you want to even eat the rice with your hand so that the smell of the local rice will still remain in your hand. And you'll be carrying the smell with you as you are going. But now, rice is commonplace. And they try to grow some rice in that place. But as I was going to that place, we got to the point where there was no more town. And we were going, we were going, we were going. We see a few villages along the way. Now the distances between the villages were becoming longer and longer. Network was disappearing. You know, it's like you are going out of this world. I'm talking of in Nigeria. And then I began to see some settlements without human beings living in them. Houses burnt. Selective houses have been burnt. Not all the houses were burnt. And it dawned on me that sometimes we hear all these news of things that are happening, but because it doesn't come near us, we don't feel it so much. We dwell here, we can sing here and shout and praise the Lord and come out with our fine clothing. I began to see a few caturreras, a few people, and I began to wonder in my heart, so what happened to the people who were dwelling in these houses? And we traveled for several kilometers along that axis before I finally arrived at this haven a 2,000 hectare rice farm. 2,000 hectares is the size of 4,000 football fields. You cannot see the end if you are standing at the middle. It was a different world entirely. They had staff quarters inside the place with air-conditioned buildings, water supply, lights 24-7 inside the farm in Nigeria. I saw the biggest tractor I've ever seen in my life in that place. And in that rice farm, they had about, about a dozen combined harvesters. Those of you who know what combined harvesters mean, you know what it means to have even one. But they had about a dozen combined harvesters. And I began to wonder, how is it that this place is existing here and right outside these premises? It's a different world entirely. Villages have been sacked. People have been driven away. And to crown it all, that farm was not owned by Nigerians. It was owned by people from another nationality. I don't want to call the nationality. Everything was working in that farm. They had a rice mill. They were milling rice and bagging rice better than most of this Thailand rice that you are talking about. And the mill was working 24-7. Now, there's a difference between where the grace of God is and where the wrath of God is. And I began to say, God, where have we missed it? What have we done wrong? that people can come from outside our country, make investment in our country, reap bountifully, and go away. Yet the sons of the land are impoverished. It is because of wickedness in the land. It's because of wickedness in the land. And I began to wonder if we had only 10 of such setups in the country, we would be exporting rice. So as I was coming back from that trip, my mind was bothered. And I was saying, God, why? Why? What can we do to get back this thing that is actually ours? I'm not talking of driving those people away. Because <laughs> if we drive them away, we will not even be able to maintain the place. We need to learn what it means to do things right. That's just it. We need to learn to do. That was my conclusion. And I said, truly, the word of God just came to me. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin
sin is a reproach to the people. Who are the people who are sinning? Who are the people who are bringing this wrath? Is it not still ourselves? So why can't we talk to ourselves and go back to our God? We have more than enough to meet all our needs. The land is flowing with milk and honey. Second experience. Yesterday, my wife traveled to Ghana and she had to go by road direct from Mokola here to Accra. We got to the park. There were two vehicles. One beautiful looking jeep and another not so beautiful Sienna. Those were two vehicles that were going to depart at the same time. Everybody scrambled to enter into the jeep. And because he didn't know how to struggle, my wife entered into the Sienna. By the time they finished loading the vehicles, the Sienna was almost touching the ground. But the jeep stood, you know now, the jeep stood Gadaga. Ah! I was saying in my heart, God, please have mercy. When it was time for them to leave, I prayed with those of them in the Siena. I said, God will take you safely to that place. The other people were saying, let's go, let's go. The other driver was saying, you be praying your own, we'll be doing our own. And I know much prayers have been said even before my wife traveled. And they left. By the time they got to Shagamu, I'm talking of Shagamu in Nigeria. The jeep broke down. And every attempt to fix that jeep didn't work. All the people who entered the jeep had to come back to Ibadan yesterday. But the Siena that was arrived at Accra last night. Again, I began to think the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. It is the Lord that showed mercy. It is the Lord that showed mercy. Today, God is saying to us, let go and let God. Let go and let God. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 27. I'm going to pick verses at random there because the whole story is a bit long, so I'm going to paraphrase it. Acts chapter 27. Please make sure you turn your Bibles to the passage and follow as we are going along. Many times we know what we want to do. And even normal science and normal philosophy can dictate some things we want to do. <laughs> but there's no substitute to being led by the Spirit of God. In Acts chapter 27 let me begin to read from verse 10 you can read the whole chapter at your own spare time let me read it from verse 9 now when much time was spent and sailing was now dangerous I'm reading from verse 9 Acts chapter 27 because the fast was now already passed Paul admonished them and said unto them sirs I perceive that this voyage will be with hot and much damage, not only of the lady and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the heaven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised, that is majority advised, to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete, and lie towards the southwest and northwest. 
you know, many times we have to deal with experts, medical experts, engineering experts, economic experts. Thank God for the experts. Their knowledge can be very helpful, but there is no human knowledge that is superior to the knowledge that comes from God. No amount of philosophy, no amount of argument can beat a word from God. Verse 13, And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that ob obtained their purpose, losing thence, they sailed to Crete. So beautiful. I mean, gentle wind, sailors will understand this better. You just put your sail and you can direct the ship anywhere you want to go. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocledon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. There are times when we get to the end of our expertise and God takes over from there. Now, if you are not on the side of God at such times, I'm sorry, <laughs> things can really get out of hand. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps under guarding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, straight sail, and so we were driven, and we were exceedingly tossed with a tempest. And the next day, they lighted up the ship. In other words, they reduced the load. All the precious things they were carrying inside the ship, they began to throw them away into the sea. And on the third day, we, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Even the things that will help them sail better became an encumbrance to them. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened to me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Hallelujah. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep. <laughs> Again, another foolish thought, so to speak. You are in the middle of the sea. The ship is going to be damaged. And you say no life is going to be lost. Even if you are a very good swimmer, swimmers don't swim at sea. Hello? You don't go to prove your swimming progress in the sea. No swimmer can survive in the sea. And this servant of God was saying, don't worry. Be of good cheer. The boat is going to be damaged. Don't worry. But no life will be lost. If you were in that boat, will you believe him? Don't answer me. I know the answer that many of us are going to give. And now I exhort to be of good cheer, but there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Kende. Fear not, Bola. Fear not, Tochi. Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. May we be in the company of the righteous. So that even if our own righteousness can't save us, <laughs> the righteousness of the one round about us, we may enjoy grace. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it, we must cast upon a certain island. Brethren, if you continue, you will know the end of that story. That actually the boat was damaged, but not one soul was lost. And the person who was given this command, or who was given this prophecy, was but a prisoner. He didn't have that authority to begin to command. <laughs> but when the jungle matured, the authority turned. Because... All powers belong to God. All powers belong to God. In heaven and the earth, all powers belong to God. Power belongs to God. All powers belong to God. In heaven and the earth.
several words to us every one of us there are words that have been spoken to us corporately but there are also words that have been spoken to us individually but oftentimes as we go along in life we meet with diverse kinds of oppositions and contrary experiences that begin to question ah, where is your God where was God where so so kind of thing happened to you how can it be that God allowed this type of thing to happen <laughs> but I tell you my brethren it doesn't change God from who God is and as long as we remain in right standing with God it doesn't change the plan of God concerning you what God has said concerning you must come to pass his word will fulfill so at such times you need to make up your mind whether you are going to believe the report or the people who are judging by the circumstances or whether you are going to believe the original word of God which you heard in the presence of God Paul said the God whom I serve sent an angel and he spoke to me and I know that whatever he says to me will come to pass I know the God whom I serve do you know the God whom you serve do you believe him enough to rather stand alone with him than to try to move with the majority of the people incidentally we live in an era where there's such great flow of information and you know all kinds of suggestions come we are not lacking in counsel if you don't if people don't counsel you Google will counsel you you understand what I mean there's abundance of information yet in the midst of all that if God if you are not with God and God with you if you don't allow God to lead you that's why we said let go and let God if you don't allow God to be the one to lead you you will be in great distress not because God desired that you should be in distress but because with our own hands we have fallen on the wrong side and when I thought about that I began to wonder I say ah isn't it possible that Nigeria will be the one feeding the whole of West Africa with rice bringing back the experience I had it is very possible in fact too possible and guess how much they use in setting up that farm 130 million dollars all those machines everything the irrigation channels and everything that they constructed in that place was at the cost of 130 million dollars that is what one senator will just pocket and he will not wipe his he will not even show that he has taken anything i'm not saying this so that you can go and begin to fight senators find politicians and you know no far from it i'm just saying there's something we can do to get back to god and the land that we are in will begin to yield its increase to us there is abundance of blessing in the land but we with our own hands have turned the blessings away that's speaking on a national basis coming down to us as individuals coming down to us as individuals can you remember when god has spoken some things to you but when you look around you when you look at the public opinion and things like that you say hey what will people now say what will be the opinion of people how am i going to be able to cope with this type of thing no maybe uh, either you want to obey god secretly or you outrightly disobey god so that you are in the favor so that people will say at least you have tried what are you trying when you know that that trial is not going to give you the desire of god people will acknowledge that you have tried but if you don't get the answer you have not got the answer Abi, hey church if you work so hard and you don't accomplish the purpose for which you are working have you succeeded have you succeeded no certainly you have not certainly you have not now God spoke to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 we are going to read several chapter 20s this morning Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 we are taking it from verse 1 to verse 3 he said 
When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots, and a people more than thou, what should happen? I just want to be sure you are following in the Bible. What should happen? Can you say that again? One more time. Be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you are come nigh unto battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and say unto the people, Hear, O Israel, you are approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not. Do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. If you read further down that passage, they began to take away anything that can bring fear in the midst of them when they are going to battle. They say, ah, if you have just married a new wife and you are saying, hey, what's going to happen? Just go home. Go back to your wife. If you have just planted a vineyard and you are saying, hey, am I going to eat of this vineyard so that you, are, you become double-minded? Don't worry. Don't go to war with us again. Go and tend your vineyard. Anything that seems, and if you are even fearful, if you are so afraid and you are not sure what's going to happen, don't worry. Just go back home. And you know, by the time you take away all such people from those who are going to battle, tell me how you will not win the battle. But it's not an easy thing to take those type of people away. It's not an easy thing to take those type of people away. God has promised and said to the children of Israel, when you go to battle, it doesn't matter the multitude of people that are, you are going to contend with. It doesn't matter how much strength they seem to have. Just trust me. I'm with you. I will go with you into that battle and I'm going to give you victory. <laughs> that was a promise God had given to them from of old. <laughs> Brethren, but many times in the scriptures, you know the experience of the children of Israel. That it was not so. Because certain times when they came to very difficult situations, it became difficult. The only thing that can make you prevail when your adversary seem bigger than yourself. We sang today, bigger than the biggest, stronger than the strongest. And many of us were motivated. Our hearts were, you know, moved up. Our faith seemed to have gone up. But when you step outside this hall and you meet that biggest outside, what's going to be your reaction? When you go outside of the church premises now and you see that strongest, the word there is strongest, so it's stronger than you many times. What will be your reaction? We used to remember this song that we sang in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I read from verse 1 to verse 4. I pray that Jesus be lifted high in our hearts this morning. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some to tell Jehoshaphat saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered together, gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. As for being afraid, fear can come to your heart anytime when you see the physical situations and when you add up the figures and they don't seem to add up. You have a responsibility you need to meet. The budget doesn't add up. You put all your savings and all the things that you can buy and sell and you are not even one-tenth of the budget yet. What do you do? Go ahead and sell all those things. Even when you sell them. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to happen. But there's a way at such times your mind goes back to the God whom you serve. And you remember the testimonies of your God. And you remember the promises of God. And you know that the promises of God are yea and amen. And you turn your eyes away from the battle. 
and you turn again to God. Jehoshaphat called on the brethren and said, Ah, let's go back to the Lord. And they went back to the Lord. They went back to the Lord. Everybody humbled themselves. They went to the Lord and they cried unto the Lord. Verses 22 to 24 of that same chapter. Second Chronicles chapter 20. And when they began to sing to the and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth and none. How many escaped? How many escaped? None escaped. When we fight the battle, we may win some battles, but we can lose the war. It's better to win the war even if you lose a few battles. Now they wanted to come to battle and by the time they looked, there was no enemy left. When God fights for you, he doesn't leave anything behind. He grants total victory. There are too many examples in the scriptures that if we want to begin to read them, time will fail us. But I'll paraphrase a few that you are very familiar with. David, for all the good that he did, Saul was pursuing him left, right, center. You know the story. Chased him from cave to cave. The whole army of Israel, the customs, the immigrations, and even people who were not in the armed forces, who wanted to do the king a favor, were ready to betray David so that he could fall into the hand of Saul. He had all the weapons of warfare. He had everything at his disposal. What did David have? He had only the Lord God on his side. On two occasions, he had opportunities to slay Saul. And he said, no, if God doesn't slay him by himself, me, I'm not going, because this is an anointed servant of God. I won't be the one to kill an anointed servant of God. The fear of God in David restrained him. Yet, the king did not have fear of God enough to respect somebody who brought great deliverance to the land. When God intervened, heritage changed. The kingdom fell in the hand of David and the lineage of kingship left Saul. It was a complete victory because not only did Saul die, the heir to the throne also died. I'm just saying that when God fights for you, he doesn't leave anything behind. It's total victory. When you fight, you may win some, but the one that you are going to leave behind will be the one that will trouble you for a long time to come. It was the experience of the children of Israel. Those people that God asked them to drive away, that they refused to drive away till today, they are still paying the price. So why not let go and let God? Why not let go and let God? Now, when the battle was over, in this same Second Chronicles chapter 20, the end product of it, <laughs> in verses... Uh, 27 to 30. 27 to 30. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jerusalem in the front of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. Hallelujah. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets into the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. And his God gave him rest round about. May the Lord give you rest round about. If you will let him and you will let go. If you will give him the chance. Many times, some of us have had wonderful experiences in our work with God. If we begin to share testimonies now, 
you will hear many people talk of the great and wonderful things God has done in the past. <laughs> but like a songwriter said, Yesterday's gone, today I'm in need. Abby? We need the Holy Ghost afresh every day. No wonder Paul said, Let him that thinketh is standard take heed lest he fall. Sometimes in the euphoria of the blessings which God had blessed us, we let down our guards. And that is the danger. As for the promises of God, they are yea and amen. We are in a place of blessing. We are in the tabernacle of the glory of God. I don't know if we are conscious of that. The glory of God is over this place. And we are dwelling under that glory. But sometimes we run out of that shelter. Sometimes we seek help where there is no help. Sometimes we run between pillar and post. And how be it? The thing that even drives us out is because we received grace already from the presence of God. It's an irony. It's a dilemma. I don't know how to describe it. That you go to the presence of God, God blesses you, you become established, and then suddenly you begin to think, ah, wait a moment. I think I can do this by myself. I think I can manage by myself now. And then things begin to go terribly wrong. It's not new. If only we will know the truth. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will do what? It will make you free. It will make you free. Asa was a king in the Bible who enjoyed much grace from God. Much grace from God. And he did many wonderful things in the Bible. In Second Chronicles, this same Second Chronicles, chapter 15. Second Chronicles, chapter 15. Now these things were written so that we will be instructed in righteousness. From verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will do what? Maybe we didn't turn our Bibles to that place. If you forsake him, he will do what? He will forsake you. How many of us want God to forsake them? I didn't see any hand raised. How many of us want God to be with us? Some are even raising two hands. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without a true God and without a teaching of the priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexation were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Does that describe something of what we are feeling like in our country now? If your child is posted to the Taraban State for youth service, or no state for you service you will begin to look for what to do to redirect the posting by all means and if for any reason you must go there you will raise many prayer points there's trouble in the land there's trouble in the land trouble in the land and nation was destroyed of nation and city of city for God did vex them with all adversaries. I think that's what's happening to us. By the way, those villages where there were burnt houses, deserted houses, only selected houses were burnt. So I was asking some of the staff in the place, what happened? Well, how is it some houses were burnt and others were not burnt? They said, ah, when they go to those places, they know the people that they want to target. Except that when they are burning those houses, do you want to wait whether your house is among the ones to be burnt or not? Everybody will run away. But those houses that were burnt were the, ha the houses of the big farmers in the place there. Oftentimes, many of them from a particular state. They were targeted. Those ones, they didn't spare. They killed them utterly. Destroyed them, destroyed their children, burnt all their properties. They allowed the other people to run away and escape. When there is vexation in the land, that's what happens. But these people have dwelt together peaceably before. 
Abi. Everybody was going about their own business and they prospered. We had big chubas of yam here. We had the meat coming. And we were eating and drinking and no cause for alarm. But when wickedness began to multiply in the land, when people would take 80% of the national, national resources to themselves and still use that resource to punish the people, God became angry and he began to turn us against ourselves. He began to turn us against ourselves. But it will not be for too long. For God gave a promise and I believe the word of God. I had seen in a vision many years ago how this land was going to be troubled. And I know in my lifetime I will see the prosperity of Nigeria. I know it. I will see the prosperity of Nigeria. Nations will come to Nigeria to come and say, how did you do it? That time is coming. If you like, say amen. If you like, don't say amen. It's not our amen that's going to bring it to come to pass. It's something God had determined in his heart to do. But there are some people who will see those days. There are some people who will not see those days. How do I know? When God said to the children of Israel, <laughs> I'm taking you from Egypt. I'm taking you to a promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. And he began the process. Oh, but things were tough. The Egyptians put so much more burden on them. You know this song. That's why I'm paraphrasing it. When the time came, things became very tough for them. Abi, did it mean that God was not doing what he wanted to do? God was still busy with his own timetable. But in the eyes of man, things had gotten worse. In fact, the children of Israel came to Moses and said, you see now, you said you wanted to come and deliver us. Now, everything is spoiled. Everything is worse. Now we need to even make bricks and get straw. They were only seeing that particular moment. They didn't look beyond to what God has said ahead. And so, Okay, glory be to God. They were delivered from Egypt. And they were now going in the wilderness. You know all the troubles they face in the wilderness. Many times when God is taking you to your promised land, it doesn't mean that you will not face challenges along the way. It's not true that everything will be bread and butter. Because if it is like that, by the time you get to the land, you will abuse the land. You will do the things the people in the land were doing that made God to vomit them. And God is faithful. You do those things, he will also vomit you out of the land. So he allowed them to go through all those difficulties, all those challenges, and it was even in that process that he told them that promise we read from uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20. He said, don't worry, you are going to fight giants, you are going to fight great people along the way, but just remain with me, don't worry, you will have victory. He wrote you. As they were going, they had experienced many miracles, and they came to a point, and God said to Moses, can you send out a few spies to go and check out the land? and they went you remember the story and they came back and they said <laughs> of a truth though, the land is what flowing with milk and honey and they even brought samples of the fruit from the land but there's something about believing the word of God beyond physical circumstances that makes you to possess the grace of God possess the possession that God had intended for you from the beginning. And this man came back and said, Ah, this is suicide mission. Me, I'm not going, oh. Lying, in fact, in our eyes, we look like grasshoppers before them. They forgot what God told them in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. That no matter how big those people are, their God with them will make them bigger than those things. And perhaps you are in the process of trying to attain a promise, attain something that God has said to you, and then all around you, things are not quite working. Don't worry. <laughs> Glory voices, what did you tell us? At the center of it all, what do you see? Hey, 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 I didn't hear you well. At the center of it all, what do you see? No, you are not saying it convincingly enough. At the center of it all, what do you see? Jesus. I'm beginning to get a bit convinced, but not completely. At the center of it all, what do you see? Jesus. Are you sure you see Jesus? 
Are you sure? Are you sure you see Jesus? <laughs> In Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. I'm telling us that our attitude can make all the difference. Whether the promise of God is going to come to pass, God will do what He's saying He's going to do, but whether you will be there when it is done is a different matter. Oh, what a shame it will be when the glorious Nigeria shall emerge. Will you be there? What a shame it will be when Jesus Himself shall appear in the sky to take His own people home. Will you be there? Uh -huh. Will you be there? Hmm. But your attitude will determine that one. Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I gave unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man everyone a ruler among them so they are not riffraffs they are people who are supposed to know better and moses by the commandment of the lord sent them from the wilderness of paran all those men were heads of the children of israel praise the lord that's from verse 1 to verse 3 verse 26 to verse 33 and they went and came to moses and to aaron and to all the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, We came unto the land, without thou sentest us. And surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Let me pause there for a moment. You know, when I was coming from that rice farm, they gave me a bag of made in Nigeria rice. And the rice is wonderful. Sorry, did I say a bag? They gave me three bags of made in Nigeria rice. Ah, and I said, God, it's not the rice that was my interest. I said, God, in this place, a foreigner is giving me gifts from my own land. I should be the one giving them gifts as visitors to my land. I don't know if you understand you get the perception of what I'm talking about. The rice is not sweet in my taste because of that. Not because the rice is not good. It's better than most of the ones we buy from all these places because it's, 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 it's wonderful. Before I get, came home, I'd already given out two bags of the rice. Even the third bag has not arrived here yet. But the point is this there is a blessing that is meant for you you should not be begging for it ah. that is that is some there is something that is your birthright it should not be used to do sarah for you until you have that type of provocation in the inside of you you will continue to be a beggar and the people you are begging, they may drop enough, sprinkle enough on your pan to enable you to just carry on. When you could be the one on the other side giving. Today may our lot change. Today may our lot change. So they came back with the fruit. Lo and behold, good fruit. Beautiful rice. Even the bagging of the rice is wonderful. But what was the conclusion of the matter? Nevertheless, the people be strong, verse 28, that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast. <laughs> and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land which 
through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants but they met inhabitants there and all the people that we saw is that not contradictory if the land is eating up the inhabitants how did they see people and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature and there we saw the giants sons of Anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sights as grasshoppers so were we so it's not only that they perceived that they were like grasshoppers they even defined themselves as grasshoppers may you not be grasshopper and you know what happened thereafter but thank God for Joshua and Caleb but you know the delay that occurred thereafter what should have been theirs immediately they had to wait a long time every delay that we have been suffering on account of our unbelief and on account of our argument with God may those arguments come to an end today as we begin to express our faith again in God and say God we are able to go up and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea though the giants may be on our way chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 Hosea chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 there is a determination we have in our hearts to say it doesn't matter what I'm feeling it doesn't matter what I'm seeing I'm going to be on the Lord's side even if he slay me I will remain with him was what Hosea was calling the children of Israel to in Hosea chapter 6. He said, come and let us return unto the Lord. For he had torn. Whatever is happening now, God knows and he allowed. How can some people go and then kill priests inside the church and go away scot free? Where is the God of Abraham? Where is the God of Israel that used to clip the land open and swallow people alive? Where is the God that the servant will call fire from on high and soldiers who are coming to arrest him will be consumed by the fire hey have you read that in your bible is that God still alive he is very alive and well it is whether we are on the side or, because if you are not on the side why would he do such things that is meant for those who are on the side of the Lord and Hosea says come and let us return to the Lord for he had turned and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, he is going forth, he is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain upon the earth. You know, sometimes the practical illustrations of these things are so, they drive the message home so well, so well again going back to the illustration of the rice farm, that place was a wilderness not because there was no water in the place the place was a marsh no, there were hardly any settlements there, just a few fishermen who strayed there to go and catch fish these people came they drained the marsh, constructed the regional channels, and instructed, installed a pumping machine, a pumping station in River Benue, which which they pump water from River Benue several kilometers away to that place to irrigate the place. Those are things that government is supposed to be doing. But government will only do that when the righteous are in power, and not when the wicked are there. When we begin to follow the Lord, 
when our leaders are the ones who are saying come let us now go into the presence of the lord and they lead us into the presence of the lord, and they lead by example and they it will become easy those things will just fall like butter in our hands the resources are already there god is looking for the people on whom he's going to bestow those resources when we go back to the lord are we ready to go back to the lord and say god what i've heard to do ah <laughs> i want to see your glory upon this land i want to be a partaker of it but first i want to be on the lord's side who is on the lord's side who is on the lord's side to whom will the lord speak and he will hearken david said once you have spoken twice i have heard who is there who will believe the word of the lord rather than the circumstances and situations where is that person are you the one are you the one we have been waiting for who is the one who is going to shake himself away from the bondage and say no i have a better heritage in god you can behave like the prodigal son today and say uh -uh, i know where i'm coming from it is better for me to go and be a slave there and the benefits of slaves when they are at home is better than when a prince is in captivity go and ask our brethren who came back from libya they will tell you that's those of them that survived they use them to make adverts on the telly they say don't go there don't go there but some of us are in Boron. we will not hear are we going to be on the lost side as I begin to round up and we begin to pray, I want to ask some pertinent questions. Like Paul said in the book of Romans, chapter 8. What is it that we separate between us and the love of God in Christ Jesus? And I mentioned a few of the things that can separate us. For some of us, it's our dressing that will separate us. For some of us, it's our hairdo that will separate us. I know people who have left the presence of God because of simple things like that. For some of us, it is the contract from government that we must give the bribe to get, otherwise we are not going to get it. It's better to get it and come and pay tight. Your tight perish with you if it comes from such type of source because it will not profit the church, neither will it profit you. For some, it is just mere popularity. Ah, let people know that I too have arrived. I'm riding this type of car. I'm living in this type of house. And Jesus said to us, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his soul? And I call us to challenge this morning. If Nigeria will prosper again, and I know it will, I'm not. Uh, the if I'm saying there is not because I'm doubting that Nigeria is going to prosper. Nigeria will yet prosper. It will be a place, a destination place for people from all over the world. But if Nigeria will yet prosper again, this is the time when God is making a separation between those who are His, those who will enter into the promised land, the Joshua and the Caleb generation, who would rather believe the word of God and say, "We will see the good of this land." You will really see the good of the land and separate yourself from those who want to compromise diverse ways you know Bible, Paul was approaching the brethren in, in Corinth come out from among them be ye separate now says the Lord touch no unclean thing and I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters said the Lord are there people here today who want to be sons and daughters of God who are ready to separate themselves from unclean things because the miracle that you have been pursuing has been waiting for you but it's waiting for you to position yourself aright so that when it comes you will be at the right location oh what a disaster if you are not at the place where you are supposed to meet with your miracle and the miracle comes it will become another man's property come out from among them separate yourself those things that look as if if you don't have them hey if you like, paint yourself from now to... If a man marries you because of the paint, will you be wearing the paint 
If a woman marries you because of the jeep, the day the like that jeep of yesterday, <laughs> the day the jeep is no more there, what's going to happen? The woman will run after another person with another jeep, and then you will be stranded utterly. Why not put your trust in the Lord? Why not say to yourself today, enough of all this awesome and possible, Lord? I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, because I'm going to meet my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up. deciding, if not that you came to church today, that, hey, well, let me go and do the thing I want to do first. When I finish, I think I can come back. Today is your miracle day. As you make up your mind to come the way of the Lord, with all eyes open, and everybody bearing witness of what is happening, you are going to come to the presence of the Lord there and say, God, I know I missed it, but now I've heard your word. I've heard your word. And I've made up my mind that I'm going to do it right. Is there anybody in the house like that this morning? Come now to the presence of God so that you can receive grace to help in the time of need. Because <laughs> I tell you, the horse is prepared for the day of battle. <laughs> but victory is where? Victory comes from the Lord. No matter how determined you are, if God doesn't help you, you will get there and you will be overwhelmed. But if God is with you, you can be sure that not only will you have a total victory, you will have a testimony that's astounding, and the people around about you will know that this is the hand of God. And on account of that, will be drawn to God. Where are those people whom God said today, you have to change your mind and do it my way? It's time to pray now. If you are one or so people, just come straight to the front. I'm not asking anybody to close eyes. Come if you want to come, and then let's pray. I'll just give a few minutes because you know I'm not, I'm not playing church here. I'm not trying to pacify anybody. You, we sang it now. All of us were singing. But you know already that if you didn't make up your mind today, <laughs> by tomorrow it will be something else. But God has come to your side. He said, don't worry about the size of the army. Don't worry about how big the issues seem to be. Just be with me. And I will give you victory in this matter, in this manner. That's how God speaks. And we still have that choice to make. He will never force it upon us. And so, we will pray for these, our brethren. And their testimony will be outstanding. You will see what God will do with them. Not because I have the power to do it, but the God who myself, who spoke to me to share this with you, knew that there are people like that. And I know there are more than these ones. But you're already making your choice on which side. Don't come back to say, please come and pray for me. I want you to come out. Because the time of the grace is now. It's not me that is doing it. I don't have the power to do anything. It's only God. Only God 
And that's what we sang at the beginning. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. In heaven and the earth.
those days. And we sang them with all our hearts, but without deep meaning. As we sang it this morning, I just began to think, you know, I've been to Malta. I've seen where they put something, they said that's where the shipwreck occurred. And I was thinking of this song, will your anchor hold? The anchor didn't hold for those people. But yes, a song that says there is a, a, a chain that is across the shore in heaven and is holding my life here. It doesn't matter which direction the wind blows me, the link is still there. It may tumble me 20 times, but the link is not yet broken. At the end, he will still pull me. We had a vehicle during the war called Minimog. And of course, there's one bigger than it. It has a chain in front of it. So when you get to a place where you cannot pass, you just take that chain, go and tie it to a tree in front there and start. It will start rolling and pull you out of every, every bad situation. It, it will drag the vehicle out. The word of God, as the glory voices began to sing also, I, I was so excited. I, I'm not excited because this is the sixth month of the year. I'm excited because from the beginning of the year, like we are singing now, till the end of it, God remains God. Hallelujah. He is God from January to December. And when this December ends, another January begins. And think of it in your life. He has always been God. So I was thinking of January. What was it in January? We fasted, isn't it? What was it in February? We had a community a discipleship project. I, that, that's from my own end. Was it in March? We went to my village in March. Was it in April? I was very sick in April. Was it in May? I went to London in May. I came back. I went to Abyokuta. I went to Ede. I went to Shobo. Was it in uh, June? Uh -uh. If you have been faithful all this while, I have no reason for argument that is going to be faithful to the end of this month. But then the message says there are some people who are facing circumstances. The Trungmi chapter 20 began to say, when you go out to fight and you see people who are stronger than yourself, their number is much more. Glory Voices says he's stronger than the strongest. Isn't it? It's just a day that the word of God has agreed together from general pastor to glory voices, even to George who, who printed the information bulletin to the message we have had. I'm sure in the evening it's going to be more wonderful. But this morning, there is this challenge, which is our miracle. Number one. The advice of experts cannot compare with the word of God. That's how this message started. If at any point you are now, people have told you something that seems to be final, but inside your heart, you have this witness that this should not be the final. Because what I have said is final does not bring you to the point of joy and fulfillment according to the word of God. Then there is a miracle waiting for you this morning. I am saying there is a miracle waiting for you this morning. Because that is what God is saying to you through the message and through the songs. It depends on what you see at the center. What you see at the center matters. Despite all people are saying and doing, if you see Jesus as, at the center, obviously a miracle is going to happen. The tempest, using Acts chapter 27, tossing us here and there, and telling us that though the ship will be broken, 
nobody will die. What a paradox. The point in Malta where they said the ship broke, they, they brought it close to the land, but I know it's very far. But the wind that blows there, you have to hold yourself, hold, hold everything you have. It is so tough. And I will say to myself, even if the people didn't die because the ship was broken, the wind was a, would have been enough. Unless God has not spoken. If God said you must get to Rome, you must get to Rome. It doesn't matter what you're meeting on the way. God said to Paul, see, you must get to Rome. They beat him, they beat him, they planned. Forty men swore that they would not eat until they killed him. I hope they died out of hunger strike. Or they ate. He got into the boat. He got out of the boat, the snake coiled around his hand. Will your anchor hold? In all these things, the word of God still prevailed. Maybe God has said something to you as we heard. And it doesn't seem to have come to pass. Particularly for those of you who have sharp memory or those who write it down. I'm just speaking from the message. And this is the day you will say the word of God will fulfill just as it was told me. Amen. It shall fulfill just as it was told you. Don't ask me. I know that this scripture is true. Very true. Acts chapter 27 verse 25. That if it is God that spoke to you, it shall come to pass just as it was told you. And we will do what the Bible says. Because in Second Chronicles verse 22, the Lord has spoken. And it was as they began to sink that the circumstances changed. Amen. Hallelujah. It says there's something about believing the word of God beyond what we see. And if you don't see, then you beg. We will give our offering, singing. And when we finish giving our offering, singing, we will stand still singing. And when we finish praying, you will still continue to sing as you are going home. Songs are composed as an expression of an inspiration or the state of the heart, the spirit of God speaking to people. I don't know who composed, were you the one who composed that song we sang today? Okay. I like that part that says at the center of it all. It doesn't matter, sir. At the center of it all, what happens? It's still him. Amen. Father, thank you for our offerings as we give. Thank you as we bless you today. Thank you as you have blessed us. And Lord God, what we give you is nothing compared with what you are giving to us. Nevertheless, it's our expression of loyalty. It's our expression of appreciation. Receive it as it is, both our offering and tithes in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, please bountifully bless those who are giving. And for those who don't have to give, we pray that you will set your eyes of favor upon them. If there's anything they must learn to do, Father, that the Spirit of God will watch them and teach them in the name of Jesus Christ. If there's any sowing they have sowed, but they have not yet reaped. We pray that you bring them to the place of their harvest. Thank you, Lord, as you bless every member of this church. In this month, Lord, let it be a month of fruitfulness. Let it be a month of reaping. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your word. Amen. We shall come to the other one.
but now we, are, we, are, we are still singing as, as he said you are God from beginning can you say you know when you don't believe what you sing it ends on your lips when you believe it it comes from your heart can you say you are God whom are you addressing me you are God despite the situations you are God despite the challenges you are God despite the difficulties you are God from the beginning till the end when you now think of the arguments when you think of all the challenges you also think of how far God has led you from January to where you are today there is no place for argument he has given you enough proof look at what you are wearing on a Sunday like this you didn't come in tatters even if there is a hole in your shoe nobody is seeing it because you are marching on it hallelujah you are gone all by yourself my situation may terrify me 